God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. But anyways, how are you doing, man? I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing pretty good. Doing great. Um, welcome, everybody, to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, I am super excited to talk with this guy. I say that every single time, but it's true. Every single time, I am I'm super excited because uh, I think it's the coolest thing to be able to talk with other artists from all over the place. And I was made aware of this guy's work on on the gram, and, um, which is my favorite thing, you know? you take a break from work you have to take a shit or something and you just start flipping through and so he's he's one of my my artists i found while i was taking a poop so hopefully he's uh, okay with that but um anyways no i i really i saw his work and i was like damn this stuff is amazing and the thing i really enjoy well first of all one of the reasons i, I really wanted to talk to you is because i you know, I'm not a sculptor. I mean, I've done some wood carving and different things like that, but I'm not really, I haven't really gotten my hands into the 3D thing too much and it always blows my mind. So the work I see him do is is not only impressive and beautifully done, but it's also hilarious. Um, and his subject matter, his aesthetics, everything, um, I think is just awesome. So everyone, please welcome Christopher uh, Genovese. Is that right? Is that right? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Genovese, on. there we go. <laughs> I'm the worst with last names. I always feel like I screw them up, but you know what? Whatever. You know, I, I've I've heard every different <laughs> permutation of my last name. I've heard I've heard Pen Penduisi once, and I'm like, there's okay. a P in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone <laughs> says my name wrong all the time, so maybe us unconsciously, I'm just like, I don't care about anyone else's name either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's the way it goes. Yeah. So, anyways, man, thanks so much for doing this. Um. Thanks for the invitation. Like, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. But. No, no, this is interrupting is the, the way to go anytime you want. Um, but yeah, I like really your work is just so cool, man. And um, I that's one thing that, like I said, I don't, you know, I've never really sculpted before like that. And it's, it's so mind blowing to me. Um, so I'd love to get into the process. But one of the things I just wanted to say right off the bat is I know you've got to be like minded a little bit with me because um, I can tell just by some of the things you do that you listen to some of the same podcasts I listen to. Um, obviously you're a fan of um, your mom's house, um, which is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to while I work. And uh, I love both those Tom and, and, and Christina, they're like amazing people and comedians. But when I saw that sculpture that you did of Tom, <laughs> I, it was, I mean, for those of you who don't, don't know this, um, yeah, it might take some explaining. Yeah, um, feel free to jump in on this. But basically, Tom Segura, he's an amazing comic. Um, and uh, he's he he likes to he's a real cool dude. He likes to do things um, outside the box. Cool yeah. Yeah. And um, he's in his 40s. I think he's 40 or something like that now. And he decides to do a dunk competition, um, and which is probably not the brightest idea. But whatever. He, he, he went for it. And he won. He did a great job. And then someone encouraged him to, uh, I think he dunked at nine feet or something like that. And then, then someone said, hey, you should do it at 9.3. You should try that. And so he went up to, to, to dunk and his leg gave out and he tore a bunch of crap in his leg, destroyed his leg, basically. And the weight of his body fell down and he snapped his humerus bone in half. And the way he was laying there, and you can, and if you see the video, it's just horrible. And, but, and then the noises that came out of him, was just like you know but anyways the should i should i set this up though we need to yeah, we need to explain to people setup. how yeah. the thing about this injury for tom is that it was caught on video and if yeah. you know tom tom is kind of famous <laughs> for being a guy who laughs at people getting hurt on video yeah. and so yeah. it had this perfect you know full circle um 
and that's what struck me about it. And and when I found out that he got injured, you know, I didn't think it was funny. I was like, oh, it's horrible. Yeah. No. But how how he reacted to his own video and how he kind of took it on the chin to say, yeah, I've been laughing at everyone getting hurt and now I'm hurt. Yeah. That's, and it and it was and what's interesting about it is, you know, like <laughs> I know this sounds no, I don't know. The way he fell in the position his body was in was is is like it's almost iconic it's like i've never seen that before and the, the sculpture you did just captures it so perfectly that it, you can't help but laugh at how funny it is um and um so tell me a little bit about that because i noticed watching their podcast that they actually have one of those on their set now so yeah, how did they, that how did that what happened there well, the first one I, I, I've been sending them like little pieces of art for years. You know, I've been a fan of them since 2017, I want to say, maybe at the end of 2016. And um, I would just send them something here and there. And I was a huge fan of them. And I just love their show. Yeah. Uh, but that piece, once I finished it, Tom saw the rough version of it on Instagram and commented on it. I was like, oh, my God, he actually saw it. Yeah. So I, I, I was like, well, and then everybody said you should send him one and i was going to anyway but so the first one i made i i painted it up boxed it up and just overnighted it to him and just was like put a little note in there you know as as, as funny as it is i still kind of feel guilty you know about i'm not a comedian and i i have difficulty making jokes at other people's expenses but knowing that it's tom i felt like in this case it would be okay because just knowing who he is yeah so i sent it to him and and i I was just hoping he would enjoy it. And then he, I guess he just put it on his set. He likes it. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, it's hilarious, man. You, you, you did a, a perfect job of caricaturing the, the pose and his expression. Um, and it's, it's, it's really funny and it's so little like that means um, a lot coming from you. And I used, and I used the wrong kind of clay too. You're not supposed to use the clay I used for that. And it was mm. so difficult to get the detail in that tiny little, cause you should use wax for that or super mm. sculpy or something. But, that's hilarious and then and then you. you ended up like casting it and uh, like making a bunch of them right so i i i you know i i like making things of pop culture and i try to do limited runs and i was like well he might not like this but let me just put it out there i'll 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 make a limited run of it and if he has an issue maybe he'll he'll let me know so i put out a limited run of them and uh it was also just a chance for me to um practice doing action figures because i've never done them before Mm. And I thought, well, if I sell enough just to cover my costs to figure out how action, how I might be able to make an action figure, then it's, then it's worth it. And I had no idea it was going to take off the way it did. I got, I, I stopped selling them. I mean, I still have orders to fill. There's a bunch right behind me on my desk <laughs> that haven't been painted yet. And but, you, you um, did like the, the packaging and everything like the I did the like, packaging and everything. Yeah. People thought I'd farmed it out to China or something. I'm like, no, man, you gotta, I looked, un I looked into it. It takes, you gotta order like 10,000 to do that. Oh, wow. So, and so then you're hand painting each one of those things too. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I did That's a time-lapse of it. I'll, I'll put a time-lapse up. I shoot everything yeah. I do. That's awesome, man. So that, that's great, man. And, and if I remember correctly, so the, here's the thing, dude, at, you know, as an artist, you know, I, I don't see any, shame and reaching out to people that you look up to and admire and sharing your stuff. I mean, that's the cool thing about Instagram in the first place. You know, it's, I reached out to you about this. I mean, I think, you know, some people have, have a, an issue with it and it is kind of weird when you, you know, some, some like people that are more like famous, you know, you don't expect for them to react, but it's a great thing when they do, man, when they appreciate the art, because it's like, Oh man, that person's got to, well, I mean, obviously Tom has a sense of humor, but, um, you know, I, I have the feeling he appreciates art, you know, and um, it's it's always a cool thing. Um, I had I had done um, a painting um, in I was like in the fall, I, f I think I finished for Steve Burns, um, the opening act movie. And I did like like 17 people on the cover and Tom's in the movie and I, he's one of the I saw people. that. And so I when I posted it, um, like I, here's the funny thing. I wrote Tom Segura like years ago. I did like a doodle of him or something. And I, I, same thing. Like, I'm just a huge fan. And I just, you know, I just wanted to show him, Hey, I, I love, I love your comedy, man. And just did a doodle. Never heard back from him. Didn't take it personally, whatever. But then, um, 
I did this opening act thing and I, I got to paint all these comics that I love. And Steve Burns, a friend of mine, and and uh, and he was just like, yeah, have fun with it and everything. And I was all excited to be able to paint, you know, Bill Burr and Tom Segura and stuff like that. And uh, and he would tell me, he's like, oh, they think it's hilarious. It's great. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Um, so then when I when it came out, I, I wanted I made sure to tag them all, you know, just just whatever. And it's the coolest thing in the world when these people actually appreciate it. And I remember I was like out for a walk with my wife and it was like I, I was so excited. It, it's a kind of embarrassing. Cause I'm like walking and I check, I got a, you know, Instagram message and I open it and it's Tom Segura. And I'm like, Oh shit. He wrote me, you know, I got so excited. And he was just like, he's like, Hey dude, I love your work, man. This is so cool. And he was like, um, big fan of your work, man. And I just noticed uh, you wrote me years ago. I, I'm so sorry. I never got back to you. Like, it was like so nice. And I was just like, but it's just funny how I was like, that like made my whole day. And I'm like, yeah, like, let's go party. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you want to be but, friends? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But it is really cool. And I think I noticed years ago, I think one of the first things I noticed of your work was you did that, um, the sculpture of Joe Rogan. Yeah. And if I remember, I don't, I don't know if you, I think I actually heard this somewhere. I can't remember, but is this true that you sent it as a gift um, and just like sent it to the comedy store? And then it got yeah. lost or something. I had a friend who would go to the comedy store like every day and he's, and he knew I was a sculptor and he knew I was sculpting Joe Rogan. He's like, man, you said that. To, I know a guy at the comedy store, you send it there. I'll make sure that Joe gets it. And I'm like, Oh, that'd be amazing. You know, I, I'd love him to have, you know, have one. And uh, I sent it there and I didn't hear, I didn't expect Joe to, you know, go crazy over. It. I just thought I was hoping for some kind of, I don't know what I was expecting as far as an acknowledgement that he got it. But after two years, I didn't hear anything. And I was just yeah. like calling my friend and going, yeah, I'm just kind of curious what happened to this. And he's like, well, I don't know, man. And so I just started mm -hmm. to assume that somebody at the comedy store had lost it or taken it. And I was just afraid somebody took it and that Joe never got to see it. Yeah. So I posted like a whiny post on Instagram, <laughs> like uh, I sent this thing to the comedy store years ago and God knows what happened to it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, a couple of days later, I don't know if Joe saw that or somebody told Joe about that or the guy at the comedy store saw it. But yeah, eventually, like a week later, Joe posted it and it was covered in dust and looked like it was in a closet somewhere. Like somebody had opened it, but just forgot about it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So he yeah. finally did he finally get it? Like does he or I don't know if he has it. Uh, you know, is it at the comedy store still? You know, is that how, how big was it? it? It's a little one. I have, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's like a mini. Most of my busts are are they're all under full scale, but that one was a tiny one. And what's you know that's pretty awesome though. Hopefully, hopefully he gets a copy. By the way, what's your friend at the comedy store? No, no, no. He he's he just lived out in L.A. And he used to. Go oh, okay. Because I'm trying to. Knew somebody at it's just weird because I know I heard this story somewhere else and then I saw your post about it. Yeah. So that's why I'm trying to remember where I heard this from. But um, I just thought, man, that's crazy. Um, because someone first, I can't remember now, but someone was telling me about an artist who sent a, a really cool sculpture um <laughs> to the comedy store, and then it was later I put the two together. But um now if you don't mind, like I wanna I wanna ask about your your process here, what you sure. because um Again, like I said, it's I'm this is so foreign to me, but there's there's many different ways or I guess mediums that you use to sculpt with, right? Like you you said like the wax um or the right clay now, is it I, all clay? Right now it's all uh sulfur free NSP clay, Chavant clay. Mm -hmm. And um I like it because you can reuse it over and over again. And and I'm just kind of used to it now. But I used to work with so super sculpey, which you can get a lot more detail out of. So you say use it over and over again. You do like a sculpt to someone. Yeah. Like, like I think it's Bruce Lee back there that you're working on. Yeah, with no hair. And then and then when it's done, you you make a cast of it. And then you just you squish that and you start over again with somebody else. Yeah. If I get you, don't keep mold, the, you don't keep that clay. No, I melt it down. Oh, my God. Yeah. That, none, none of them exist anymore. <laughs> oh, man. That's so weird. All right. This is interesting. Um, all right. So let's start with the process here. So you start with drawings first, uh, drawing the person out. And how does that work? Because, you know, I imagine you got to get a lot of reference and you're not just drawing. You have to 
you can't just draw the front, right? You need more than that. You have to draw different angles. And so how does that work exactly? Uh, the references help. Usually it's just one little thumbnail sketch on a, on a post postcard or something. I don't know if I have any with me, but, oh, <laughs> here's the original dunk champ. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That that's, was it. See, that's awesome. Cause you totally captured that, the gesture of that. Like, so, so funny, man. But you're totally right. That it was, he's, that was such an iconic pose in a way. And that's yeah. what struck me about it. it it's it could be like a Nike logo. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You could have, instead of the, the, like the alligator on the golf shirt could just be a little cigar. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oh, like, I want that, man. I want yeah. that. That's <laughs> a little, that, yeah. they should make that shirt, man. Like a Ralph Lauren shirt with mm. a, a little embroidered uh, dunk champ. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so cool man um but so what's this process like because so you just do like a little thumbnail mm -hmm. and you like you don't you, you don't sit there and draw every angle you just no. do like Sometimes. and from that you're able to like that that's what blows my mind is how are you sculpting in three to three dimensions like this from the references yeah i mean that's amazing, man. Cheating. I mean, I do, a, <laughs> I do a kind of a neoclassical style, not just, I don't, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of sculptors on, on Instagram, especially you can see who are, who do such a perfect likeness that uh, it's mind blowing. I, I don't go for a per maybe I could do one if I tried one, but I go for iconic, like that's the mm, word. Yeah. And, and so I, I do a neoclassical style because I want to do the, the floral and scroll patterns and the hair and different things and, and depicting the character the way they would be if this was ancient Rome or Greece or whatever. Yeah. That, so that, 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 that's kind of a cheat, you know? Well, <laughs> you cheater. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you still, it still looks really good and still looks just like the person. So, Thank you. I mean, I, it's just, so how does it start? Like you, you're just, because I mean, you, I mean, my, again, like, Okay, let's put it this way. Years ago, um, I was asked to do, who was it? it Freaking like, I think it was Sarah Palin or somebody like that. Um, some company was going to make like a little toy of Sarah Palin for something. And so they hired me to draw her from every angle. So I did like do like a caricature oh, wow. of her from the front. And then they wanted me to, they wanted a side view. And I'm like, I start to, you know, try to make up a lot, basically just drawing wise. Um, and of course the backside and everything else, but like, you know, that was a little bit challenging just because, you know, it's one thing doing a caricature of someone from the side view versus the front. But now because you've done the front, you have to try to match the proportions exactly. But you, as a caricature artist, I want to exaggerate even more from the side and do mm -hmm. different things. And you have to kind of just like, ah, you know, make sure it fits and matches. But I can imagine, or I can't really imagine, like in 3D, how much more difficult that is. So, I mean, I'm just curious what your, you, you just start with a big block and just start, me, I guess, measuring this out or how does it work, man? I, I imagine, <laughs> I, I mean, I sculpt because I'm intimidated by painting. Like I want to oh, paint, okay. but I'm intimidated by it. And I, I am obsessed with oil paintings and I, that's why I love your work and uh, why, you know, uh, <sighs> I've had the same set of oil paints sitting under my desk for the last, it's literally a decade. I, I, mm. I just, I'm intimidated, but um, I would think that it's at least a similar, a similar process to every other kind of creative work. You do broad strokes, then you refine them and then you refine them even more. And then you realize you screwed up and you go back and do something completely different because one of your eyes is two millimeters too far back. And it's not like, I mean, I guess you can cut it out and pull it back a little bit, but it's easier just to, to, completely redo it so 30 percent of the work is just redoing work you screwed up but hmm. I, I build up the mass so i make sure and i look at all the references and all the different sides and i don't always get it on the first try i think the only one i ever got on the first try was anthony bourdain anthony hmm. bourdain i sculpted that so fast i sculpted it in like two days hmm. and most of them take a month wow but um yeah so build up the mass and when if you got lucky enough to have the mass just right and it's intuition you know to to know how much it is and, and sometimes you're wrong and then you just and then you just work it back and you build it up and work it back but it's just building up the mass and then looking at it from the different angles cross-referencing it with your with your photographic references making sure you're not 
forgetting about photographic distortion. I'm sure you deal with this sometimes. You'll see like somebody will be shot right up here with a 35 millimeter, millimeter lens where they'll be shot from far away with a 50 millimeter lens and the, the dimensions are totally different on their face. Mm. I, I don't want to disappoint you, but it's just, it's just <laughs> t- tenacity and brute force. I just keep working it and working it and working it. And yeah. since it's in 3d, if you're doing it right from one angle, usually when you get to the other angle, you've already kind of gotten a head start on that angle. You know, mm. if, you, if, if you put everything in place, you have to paint it. So you're starting from scratch every time. Each one of your paintings is a completely new painting, but for the sculpture, it's, it's all part of the same piece. Yeah. And then, so I imagine like, I mean, I've got, um, I've, I know a little bit about this a little bit. Cause I, one of my really good friends is, is a pretty amazing sculptor. Um, so I've seen some of his process and so on. So I know you, you sort of start out with a big blocky chunkiness and then you start to like slowly refine and smooth in. And it is in a way it's, it is kind of, I got, I kind of explain to people about my painting processes. I think of myself as sculpting. Like when I'm, when I'm, when I'm blocking in a painting, I am, I am sculpting in a two dimensional way. Like I'm, I'm basically everything's put down based on the form. Um, so brush strokes go in, into the certain form to like sculpt and pull the features up. Um, but, uh, yeah, something about the 3D thing feels so intimidating to me. It seems so like foreign. Um, but I mean, I used to do it. Um, funny story. I have uh, actually here. Yeah, come here. There we go. So I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah. So this is great white. Yeah, it's a great white shark that I carved out of basswood when I was 12 years old. And, um, it's really cool. It's got like, you know, a little smile. I mean, that's it. fantastic for, I mean, in especially a, 12 years old. You, yeah. The, the eye is from a, a bird, like for, you know, for people that would carve birds and stuff. Yeah. It's a little black eye. But um, I was a part of this thing, this 4 H thing. I lived out in the middle of nowhere in the country. They had 4 H groups. And, um, and uh, you, you could like enter competitions and stuff. And um, I was in archery. <laughs> And so I, I was actually really good with archery. Um, so I, I did that. And then everyone's got like their, you know, um, there's, you go into the room and there's like a, a, a kid my age with a big pig and he's got a ribbon by his pig. And then you walk in and there's like this little teeny stand with a little wooden shark on it. <laughs> and and uh, I walked in the next day and there was a blue ribbon and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I won something. Uh, but that's what I did it for. And I was always obsessed with sharks. And so my dad was an artist and he helped, he helped me, you know, make sure I got the shape right in the piece of wood. And then I just whittled it down and I used like a Dremel tool and sandpaper, all stuff, and then painted it. Um, so I remember just being like, so, you know, blown away by, it. I couldn't believe I did something like this. Cause like, again, I'm obsessed with sharks. And at that time there was no internet, there was no, um, you know, everything was based off of old books of pictures of great whites. You know, there was no way to actually get videos of them. Um, so I remember just being so excited about it, you know, and then, uh, and I was like, man, I'm, I want to be a wood carver. Like I was really getting into it. I got like a little Dremel set and everything. And then um, one time I was, I started, I started carving uh, faces on walking sticks. Cause my dad was doing that. He was carving really cool things on walking sticks and so I started getting into it and starting to figure out like, oh, how you got to push back to make the nose pop out. So, if the, you know, so I started like figuring out how to, you know, get these features to work, but it's, it's crazy on wood because you can't put it back, you know, so it's a, it's a little bit more trickier and I still have the walking stick. It's upstairs. My parents just gave it back to me after like 25, 30 something years, oh, that's cool. but it was the last time I ever did a carving because. I just got done cleaning and sharpening the knife and I'm working on the side of the face. And all of a sudden I start hearing and I'm like, what the heck is that noise? And I look down and there's just blood bouncing off the top of my Chuck Taylors, just like, like splattering everywhere. And I'm like, what the, and I look and my middle finger was just like hanging and you can see the bone and everything. It was just hanging there. I just sliced it right off the the tip. And Dude. I'm, I remember just being like, dad, you know? <laughs> how old like, are you? I think I was around 12. And, um, 
and I went to the emergency room and um, the doctor was a real jerk. He was like, you know, he was making fun of me and he was like basically calling me an idiot for like for playing with knives and stuff. And I was trying to explain to him that I was an artist and and he was like, you know, it's what you get, dummy. You know, he was like calling me dummy wow. and stuff. And I remember just being like, no, I'm an artist, you know, um, I had to get like four or five stitches or something. Not a big deal. But but anyways, I never did it again. It like freaked me out and I never went back. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> yeah. It was just crazy, but um, you know, maybe one day. But uh that was that put an end to it. That was your traumatic I experience just, and you just swore off sculpting. I just forever. didn't even like, yeah. I just didn't even consider wood carving again. Like I was like, eh, yeah, I think I'm over that, you know. Um, I don't know, I was always obsessed with drawing, anyways, but I think more it was just for a while, it was it was kind of like yeah scary <laughs> it was i remember like you know I, i'll never forget that sound that tapping yeah. sound like god that's a very vivid portrait you painted just now yeah. <laughs> of that scene yeah well i think clay is a lot safer but um... clay is safer clay has its own yeah <laughs> yeah clay can just drive you insane and then you just stick the knife in your throat <laughs> and it's it's um, got to be such an interesting thing to like spend all this time um, like, what does this do? I'm just curious. What does this do psychologically? Like to spend all this time working on a sculpt, getting it just perfect to your perfectness, your, your, your preference or whatever. Yeah. And, and then making a cast of it and then afterwards melting it down. Like, is it satisfying or is it kind it, of like, like painful? No, it's satisfying. <laughs> I like the impermanence of it. I, I like the fact that it disappears. You know, sometimes I think about making casts uh, just to break them on Instagram and freak people out because, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, people, objects are so precious. And when you can yeah. make them, when you can make them, they're, they're precious to you, but they're not because you could just make another one. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. I, huh. But but sitting and sculpting and doing all the work, once I have the mold, I have it. I have it. So, and nothing will ever be as good as the original. There's, there's the yeah. fidelity. The, the, the first cast is roughly the same as the hundredth cast. And if it's not, you, you go in and do post work and fix it up. Now I'm, I know I'm probably going to sound like an idiot, but whatever. So like when you're working, you know, like if you're making a mask for somebody for a movie, you're going to make, do make special effects, makeup on someone, yeah. you make a cast of their face. Right. And you you know is that sort of exactly the same thing as you you are making the sculpt and that's like the person's face and you're just making a cast of that right, right. And once you have that you don't so it's just but then from there you're what kind of like what are you making your um sculptures out of like any kind of because some of them look like you're making like bronze and um, right so how does i'm just confused because yeah. it's, it's just <laughs> man so again just to backtrack again, my dad, when he, he was into wood carving um, and he would, he would do like these intricate, like fish and, you know, different things, um, super detailed. And then he would hand paint them and they would look like, like better than a mount, you know? Um, but beforehand he used to do like these studies in clay and, and they were just something about it. Just being in clay was so beautiful. And some of them he he just kept and they'd sit they'd sit and collect dust in his studio, but then others I remember watching him just like smush it up and I'm like, this is kind of the same thing like what in the world because it was so perfect and awesome but he didn't even make cast of it, mm -hmm. he was just practicing, oh, okay. you know, um, he he wasn't making casts or anything he was just using it as a, um, sometimes he would do like a sculpt like that so he could figure out what kind of lighting he wanted to do in a painting. So he would sculpt a fish and then try to control the lighting. And then wow. you do in a painting of it, you know, but so I, I always had that kind of thing in my mind. I was like, that's, just, that's just terrible. How could you smush that? You know, <laughs> but um, it's interesting. I get what you're saying. You, you know, it, you don't really need it anymore, but how does it work exactly to like, like when you make that mold, can you use that mold for anything? Like any, like any kind of tech, like any kind of casting material, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, does it work that way, or do you? I can't you make bronze it? casts out of it or anything like that. I would need to get it a different process going on. But 
Um, I, I, you can use it for polyurethane resin. You can use it for uh, gypsum cements. Uh, um, I had a friend, the guy who actually got me into molding and casting, I was, he, he used to do it and I would look at it and go, oh my God, you can make a million things over and over again. Um, and that was always an attractive idea to me is being able yeah. to replic replicate things and paint them in various versions. That's what I really wanted to oh, do. Oh, interesting, yeah. Before I ever thought about, you know, just for myself, I'm like, oh, I'm going to make this this character and I'm going to paint it a hundred different ways. I don't know why, but uh, that was <laughs> interesting to me. Um, but I, I work in gypsum cement mostly because uh, I love the the way this, the stone feels and the weight of it and the fact that it's fragile. I enjoy that it's fragile because then the object becomes, if it was plastic, and I can make them out of plastic, uh, if it was plastic, it wouldn't be precious in the way a, a, a statue is normally like, ooh, handled carefully and placed carefully. Ooh, don't don't go yeah. near that. When you when something's fragile, you treat it differently than something that you can just toss on the floor. You don't care. I mean, mm -hmm. so that attracted to me. That attracted me to to that material. It sings when you run your finger over it. it sings. It has like a, 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 a. It's because it's stone. It makes a sound which I really love. I'm very auditorily sensitive. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and, like, and I just leave me alone. Give me some quiet time. It's singing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been known to sit here and listen to my, my bus sing. Um, <laughs> but um, it's also environmental. You know, I was, I'm, 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 I'm calling myself an environmentalist, but uh, I like that. I'm not putting more plastic into the world than necessary. Like that's why I, Took me so long to do action figures and stuff. Um, but uh, I could make, and I do cold casting, which is urethane resin. So mostly with the busts anyway, it's only gypsum cement and urethane resin uh, bonded with metal. Mm. And if I could do it in metal, I would, but it's not really cost effective. I'm going to be doing it this year, actually. I'm going to a foundry and getting my first bronze cast made. Mm. And uh, just for myself, Maybe I'll get two and see if, you know, somebody out there will, is willing to pay what, you know, a bronze cast would cost. But if I had a choice, it would just be stone and metal. But, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. What was your main inspiration for getting into this? Specifically, I kind of fell into what I'm doing just as, as a consequence of, of the muse of just inspiration of getting images in my head that I'm like, oh, that's an object I want. And I would just make it for myself. <laughs> but I've always been obsessed with objects since yeah. I was a little, little kid. If you look at pictures of me as a little kid, I'm always holding an object. Like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually a mad ball or, or a yeah. monster or a dinosaur or a shark because I was obsessed with sharks too. Yeah. Um, and if, we were at, if I was at my mom's house, I could reach on the shelf and pull down my little tiger shark that I carved, you know, oh, which is the awesome. exact same size as yours. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> I think that's I was so awesome. 14 when I did that though. Yeah. But um that's awesome. But yeah, I I I just uh, I just obsess over objects and I I I love Renaissance art and uh and ancient history and pop culture. And so it all just kind of mashed together. Yeah. And came out. It is really cool. There's something really cool about like like you know, looking at the dude or you know, your um yeah, you know, you're Anthony Bourdain, but seeing it in that style is amazing. Have you not now, as far as like commissions and stuff, do you get commissioned a lot by any of these people to do this kind of stuff? Or is it more like private stuff or, or how does that work? Exactly. Every, everything I make, I make just cause I want it. Yeah. And, and I just, and I hope that somebody else will want it too, but if they don't, the time was well spent because it was something that, I, that I wanted. But if someone sees like, you know, sees like the Anthony Bourdain or whatever, and they want one, you still have the mold and everything. You can easily make another one, right? Yeah. And um, do you, is there a lot that you have to do afterwards? Like uh, clean up and all that on it? Or do you, is it- About pretty? an hour. If I didn't totally screw up the, the casting process, sometimes you can, if you're not focused, you can get bubbles and trouble areas hmm. or the mold. I do what um, cut molds. So it's like a glove mold, you know, that would fit over your, if I was the bust, it would fit over my head like a glove and then it's cut up the back mm. and I just peel it out like that. And sometimes the mold won't align and you'll pull it out and you'll have this hideous line on the back. You basically have to take two hours, three hours sometimes to re-sculpt the back. Mm. 
Um, Interesting. Which, now that I think about it, you know, considering how long it takes to cast, I could probably just make a new cast <laughs> because <laughs> it doesn't take three hours just to make a new cast, but I don't want to waste it. So, <laughs> but not usually, not usually, about an hour, two hours to, to fix it up, patch bubbles, fix up the ears, hide the scene. I got a, I got a, a statue of David cast um, off of like Amazon or eBay or something 20 years ago and it arrived and it was so terrible. I paid like 40 bucks for it and it had seams going down the side and the seams looked hideous. And I just never forgot the horror of this. This thing was 40 bucks for a rip off. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> uh, have you ever seen the David in person? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty Dude. awesome. There's no word for it. there's I heard yeah. that there's a condition people come down with sometimes when they go to Florence where they literally lose their mind because of the art. But it's called like the Florentine syndrome or something. I don't know what it's called, but it, <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it, man. Yeah. People are hospitalized regularly every oh year when they gosh. when they go to Florence and they go to the museums, they 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 have like panic attacks and they have to be hospitalized. And yeah. I don't I'm not that's not surprising at all. I mean when I went I stayed in Florence for like a week. And, um, I, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I would, listen, I'll put it this way. I don't think I ever had like a favorite artist out of all artists ever until I went to Florence and I saw the David, um, because first of all, I really didn't even have that much interest in seeing it. it it's so commercialized. It's you see it on postcards, you see it on people's aprons. It's like a you know, it's a you know, it's just like a a thing that you know. Oh, you're going to Italy, you know, the day or whatever. Um, but my wife, she she stated that she had been to, to you know a few different times, and she's like, we got to go see the David. And we had been walking around all day, and we we saw a bunch of stuff, and I was just like, man, eh, you don't have to. It's something, you know. I was like, it's not that big of a deal, whatever. She's like, no, you got to see it in person. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. It was just weird. Like, I just didn't, I was feeling so like whatever about it. I mean, I, there were so many sculptures. I saw so many, you know what I mean? Uh, they're all over in the courtyards. They're everywhere. So, um, but for some reason, I don't even understand it. But when I walked in there and saw the David, I cried. Like it, I Probably couldn't did too. believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was looking at. And the fact that he did that when he was 26 years old, and out of one giant piece of, I mean, and it's just, um, it really, I can understand people that, I mean, it's funny. I never heard of anyone, what, I, what you just said happening to people, but, but I felt like, like, like I was in the presence of something amazing. I, I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. And I started immediately just getting into Michelangelo, like reading all about him and like, and I realized he's the best artist that's ever lived. I mean, and I've gotten in arguments with people like, well, you know, you know, this and that. And what well, he, you know, he's not the greatest painter. And it's like, uh, he, he even would say he wasn't the greatest painter, but he painted the fucking Sistine Chapel. Okay. So, <laughs> and he didn't even want to, <laughs> you know, like, you know, well, I, I, I don't know who uh, somebody <laughs> fact check me, but I heard that he painted the Sistine Chapel as somebody paying, playing a prank on him that they knew he didn't like painting and didn't believe in his own painting. Yeah. And that yeah. they recommended him because they knew it would frustrate him. And well, the 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 story first, the the Pope um, at the time was a real dick. Um, <laughs> sorry, I know you just, your spit take. Usually common. Yeah, yeah, he's a real dick. Back then, anyway. And he was evil, and he would have people killed and all kinds of different things. And Michelangelo was had such a reputation as um, I can't remember the nickname, but it was something like. He was basically considered godlike, and people thought that he was godlike, and he had like this, this power. And the Pope hated this. The Pope was like, you know, no, he's just he's just a man. He's this and that, whatever. And he was he actually he was asked to paint the Sistine Chapel because the Pope wanted to prove a point that he's just a man, and he knew he wasn't a painter, so. He's like, okay, let's give this great artist. He's going to paint the Sistine Chapel and see what he does. And Michelangelo turned it down. And he, you know, basically like Raphael should do this. Pick one of the other Ninja Turtles, but I don't want to <laughs> do it. 
So, but anyways, he was forced to do it. He, they made him do it. And, not, and, and it's funny because he did paint a lot of the priests and different people into the painting as demons and stuff like that. But at one point, um, he got fed up and pissed off. And he was so famous and so loved um, that he, he just left. And he, I, th- I, can't, I think he went like, so, I don't remember. It was like a long trip. He like went very far away. But basically, um, I heard that the Pope actually traveled to meet him wherever he was, like had to travel all the way across the country um, and basically said, hey, please finish this painting and paid him something like in our time would be something like $15 million or something. Paid him some ridiculous amount of Jesus money so that he would come back and paint this thing. But um, it's crazy because like basically Michelangelo was like, no, not, you know, I'm done. I'm done with this. You know, imagine how terrible it would be painting that thing, like laying on your back for all, you know, and he's not really even a painter. <laughs> also, imagine being so famous that you could say no to the Pope and just be like, yeah, that's what's skip, crazy. Skip town. I mean, they, he could have had him killed. I mean, yeah. that's the, the Pope was like a like, was like a mobster back then. Um, yeah. But that I mean, I'm leaving out a lot of details. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's like the gist of it was basically like he was trying to make a fool of him. And, and, uh, but the crazy thing is yeah. he's like best sculptor and he does the Sistine chapel, which is an amazing piece of art. And he only had a few lessons of painting that way when he was raised in, you know, what's that school called? The, uh, can't remember what they're called. The, that family, the, fe- uh, you know, I should be an artist. We'll, we'll just call him a fetish, a fetish, the fettuccine family, the fettuccine family. The fettuccine family. <laughs> the fettuccine family. Uh, but he wasn't like it's not like he was a master like he didn't spend all his time painting so that that's why i'm so blown away and then yeah. then i went to um siena and there's this beautiful i don't know if you've have you been to siena is that the huge so. racetrack it's just oh my gosh it's like a, a medieval looking town it just smells thousands of years old and like cobblestone and just beautiful they have this giant huge horse racetrack in the middle of their court all their shops go around and they have a horse race every year. It's famous. And people hang out their windows and watch this horse race. Um, the They don't wear saddles. And oh, wow. the, the, the riders fall off and get killed all the time. And the, the race is actually more about the horse. They don't care about the rider. It's it's So a horse, even if it doesn't have a rider and it wins, it still wins. <laughs> so the riders are kind of just like, whatever. You know? <laughs> That's so, interesting. But, but in Siena, they've got this insanely amazing church with – this giant like pulpit thing that Michelangelo carved out of like marble. And it's like, it's like this preacher climbs up this beautiful handmade thing that Michelangelo carved. And then there's his carvings are inside the church all over the place. It's just unreal. And then there's a library um, that they only let you go in like maybe once or twice a year. And I was lucky enough to go in ceilings all done by Raphael Mm -hmm. and like, super super colorful and they said oh yeah we we don't we don't even ever dust it we don't touch it we're not allowed to touch it so that's just how it looks wow so dude it's amazing man but anyways he designed whole cities like people don't realize that michelangelo actually designed cities and stuff it's, it's a crazy different time it's a different time no one can touch him man you know fuck leonardo that's what I <laughs> um so anyways I, how i'm interested in um i mean this is it's really cool that you that i think it's such a great idea that you're mixing like the pop culture stuff in that style um but have you um is this something that like are you trying to like uh build up a have some kind of show with it eventually one day or is there some kind of i'm just curious like where you want to go with this because it's mm-hmm. it's it's such a cool thing that's i mean it's it's seems unique to me anyways the way that you're doing it, your approach anyways. Well, it is it, all the, all the statues are connected in a way and they all kind of are, are part of the, the same narrative in, in a sense. Um, but it's a very personal narrative. It's a, you know, it's a, it's autobiographical. So uh, it has a direction, but it also is subject to whatever happens to me in my life. Like I have a list of a hundred busts I want to make roughly. And, and I'll, I'll be certain I'm going to do the next one. And then when I sit down to actually sculpt it, somebody completely random comes out and I'll be like, well, okay, that was weird. <laughs> so, like while well, you're working on it, it all of a sudden starts to look like someone else yeah. and then you just go with it. Uh, yeah. Like that almost, ha- I sculpted Warner Herzog 
I sculpted Werner Herzog and I, and halfway through it, I realized I was sculpting Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> and I was like, uh, do I, do I stick with Jean-Luc or do I, you know, hold to uh, Herzog? Huh. I held the Herzog. I'll probably do Jean-Luc again later, but um, <laughs> there is a, it's a, it's a story that I don't know the end of. So, I mean, there's no, there's no overarching plan or mm. message I just keep to what feels honest and sincere for me as, as an artist yeah. and, and that, you know, I'm fulfilled with that, but there's, there's other things I want to do. Like, I'm not going to just do busts forever. Like there's mm-hmm. other things I want to do that uh, um, I plan to move. Like I have, I have ri- really ridiculous, like grandiose things I want to do, but it's like, will I be able to, f- feed myself i don't know <laughs> taking the time to do something like that well what what is i mean well i want to hear I, hope that, I don't know if that answered your question at all but <laughs> not really but um okay no, I'm just kidding. Well, no, I'm, I'm you just can kidding. ask it again you can ask no, it again I'm, I'm just kidding but um okay. what so are you able to do this full time or is this something that you have to do on the side already because i'm I trying can... to think it seems like it would take so much time to do this kind of work too i do it full time now yeah i have an etsy store and i sell you know enough to enough to justify it and oh, that's uh, awesome that's awesome but i went to i went to school for film and i've always wanted to be a, a i've always wanted my career to be filmmaking but i worked in in that along that career path for long enough to know that i'm not really built for it mm. uh, and if i and if i could do it it would be something that would require circumstances i would have to plan for um, uh, but yeah, I do, I do it full time, pretty much seven days a week, really, especially yeah. this last year. I thought I was doomed when the pandemic hit, Yeah, but everybody discovered Etsy apparently. And yeah, that's uh, awesome. That's really, that really awesome, man. I made it through the year. So what, what is this grandiose plan that you <laughs> want to do though? I want to hear that. I want to hear what, what the, what the, if you, if you don't, if you don't want to share it, cause it's super secret, but uh... it's, it's no, 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 it's not secret. I mean, <laughs> and also if it's not like Keep it secret, keep it safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to, it more in, along the lines of what I do already, but just instead of just busts, more elaborate pieces, like I want to do a, I want to do like you have the, the, you know, um, the old Bernini statues of Apollo, you know, and, and, uh, I'm going to screw up the myth, Daphne, <laughs> Diane, I don't know. Um, there's, there's, there's scenes of figures interacting in these dramatic ways that tell the story of a myth in a, in a statue. I want to do something yeah. like that, but for movies. And I want, to, I want to do these grandiose figures of like Rocky knocking out uh, Ivan Drago. Um, that you would know. be awesome, man. But who's, who's going <laughs> to, you know, who's going to want that? So I have to, I have to um, make peace Sylvester with Stallone. just for myself. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Dude, those guys are so into themselves. If you did like a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger sculpt, that guy yeah. will buy it, dude. He, he wants that in his living room. That'd be you amazing. Know? Yeah. He wants it in his giant shower. Like while he's taking a shower, he's like, ah, oh, you look so amazing. You know, <laughs> I think what you should do is you should, you should take another, you know, you can take this. I'll give you this for free. Sure. Now, uh, take that Segura and do like, okay, just what you were saying, like those old Greek sculptures mm-hmm. of the mythical, but you got to have Bert Kreiser and Tom Segura, like in that scene, like Bert, like leaning over and like, just like, oh no, buddy, you know, and like Tom, you know, that would just be hilarious to see like a life size <laughs> great 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 minds think alike uh before i wanted to do the action figure i was going to do the pieta with <laughs> yeah, with Bert exactly. holding a hurting, holding a broken tom <laughs> that is exactly what i'm saying yes yeah <laughs> oh my god oh my gosh but yeah something like that would be so cool but that's that's like a i think it's great you know like obviously like one of the hardest things as an artist obviously is trying to separate yourself from other people trying to stand out trying to have your own aesthetic your own look um integrity all that stuff um and there's so many people that are sculptors so how do you stand out what do you do you know what i mean and so that's 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 kind of a fun way to like you know try to take things to a different place because you know there's it's it's funny like i don't um you know, I early in my career, 
whenever I had a free moment, I would just do, um, I would just for fun, just practice. And I would do paint little paintings of different celebrities or whatever. And, you know, um, I don't really have that time now. Like anytime I have this free time, I've got my kids, I got all this stuff going on. Um, and you know, my career as an illustrator basically takes up all my energy and my time. So my free time, when I get to create art, I want to just do like oil painting and stuff like that. But it's, and I want to do it for myself. But then I see like these, you know, you know, a lot of caricature artists out there, for example, are always like pushing on Here's a new piece I did of Keith or Sutherland. Here's a new, it's like, I, I'm like, I, I, why? I know I can do it. Like, I don't, you know, it's like, I, I'm more like if, if I get paid to do it, I'll do it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have that kind of, but it's like, that's the thing is there's, do we need one more caricature guy out there that's just randomly painting pop culture you know what mm -hmm. i mean like there's it's almost too much in a way mm -hmm. so i find myself kind of feeling like well what do i want to do with it i want to take it somewhere else and I, I hopefully when i have more free time i'll be able to do more of that kind of stuff but it's that's the tricky thing you know because there's there is so much there is so many people out there doing everything you know <laughs> and, and you're an adult and you have responsibilities <laughs> yeah and it's hard to carve out the time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why you don't ever, cause I don't know if years ago we had an interaction years and years ago, 2018 on, okay. on, on uh, Instagram, I want to say, because you did a, you did a sketch of Joey Diaz. Mm -hmm. I love. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. And I saw that sketch. I was like, that's, that's fantastic. And I, I completely ripped it off and did a uh, tattoo of Joey Diaz kind of modeled after your sketch of him. Oh, that's awesome. And you, I think you commented on it. And I think you said, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> what, you did the tattoo or like? No, I didn't get the tattoo. I just designed it. There was a time oh, a few okay. years ago where I was, I was between careers and the Etsy hadn't really, you know, started to support me yet. And I was thinking about being a tattoo artist. So mm -hmm. I just started doing tons of tattoos and I did a Joey Diaz tattoo that said immigrant mentality and it had oh, Joey yeah, Diaz's yeah, face yeah. and it was very much <laughs> modeled after that yours. Now. Yeah. That's so funny. That would be but a cool I, sculpt actually. But those... That would be, I would love to have a Joey Diaz sculpture too. Like his face is, is amazing. <laughs> See, that's when I did that. I think about yeah. that as sculpting. I still do that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That that's a good example of, excuse me. That's a good example of what I do on my iPad. Like that's just me time. That's just like, you know, and, and what I mean by sculpting too is I start something like that. I think I have a video of that out there somewhere mm -hmm. of me. I think I, yeah. And I think I start with like just a gray background. And I just start pulling everything out of it, you know? And that's yeah. what, that's like sculpting, you know, you're just kind of like shaping it out. Cause I don't know exactly how it's going to go and I'm pushing the form and all that stuff, but I do that kind of stuff for fun. That's the kind of stuff. But what I mean is like, there's like a lot of artists out there that they ju they're just doing all this extra work. Um, like full finished paintings they'll come you know of you know a, like they'll come up with some character um like i think i there's a lot of things i'd like to do like a, you know like it'd be fun to take like a like a movie that just came out that i really like and do a whole spoof thing and paint it in my way you know like but artists are doing that kind of stuff all the time mm -hmm. um and i'm kind of like there's so many artists doing that all the time that i kind of just feel like oh like you know and but i know i do it differently but the other thing is, is all I really have time for is stuff like the Joey Diaz thing where I can sit um, with my kids playing and different things and I can just be there and play around on the iPad. Yeah. But any other free time, it's like, well, that's I, I'm mostly the, working <laughs> well, <that makes laughs> on jobs. <sense. laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. But that's, that's one of the issues with Instagram too, is that I, I haven't spent a lot of time on Instagram lately because it's, it's overwhelming. And, and you will see, you'll be bombarded by other people doing art that you are like, oh, how do they find the time to, you know, do yeah. this stuff and, and, <laughs> or, or some, or you'll have an idea for something in it's nascent form and then you'll see it fully rendered by some other artists and you'll go, yeah, well, at least I don't have to do that now. You know, you look on the bright side. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's happened. When you go sure. on Instagram, you're going to get hit with all these other artists throwing all this art at you. And yeah, I, I would react that way too. It'd be like man, when, when I, when am I going to get a chance to do something fun? But it's like, you just <laughs> well, have to, yeah, I get like, bomb something. I get bombarded with people like, like, why aren't, why aren't you, you do more caricature sketches and put them out. It's like, yeah. because I'm working on jobs that yeah. I, I don't have time. 
I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old and mm-hmm. teenagers and ugh. Um, but it is it is funny how you do you're right you get that pressure when you watch and you're on instagram and stuff like oh man but there it's it's i'm the kind of person there's so many things i want to do that you you start feeling like uh, like you know and then i started doing stand-up as well so like oh shit i'm yeah i'm doing my i'm going to have my first night back tonight um in over a year so i'm nervous because i haven't um i mean i feel good about my stuff but like this is like it's been since over a year ago now because March in 2020 was my last time. So I'm, I'm doing a show. Um, Steve Byrne um, invited me in June to open for him at the Chicago Improv on the 11th, 12th and 13th. So I'm going to be doing three nights with Steve Byrne. So I'm like, and that's a real awesome club. Um, so now I've got to get out as much as I can during the week and work on my stuff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I gotta get, cause I've got like basically a month to get ready. Was that uh, something you always thought about doing or what, what, what inspired, I want to interview you now. Now that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> if, if you, but we can skip it. If you have an that's interview fine. somewhere else with someone and they yeah, ask yeah, you about yeah. all that, but that's, that's super interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, no, I've always, always been interested in comedy from the i can't even i mean ever since i was a little kid and i think it started really with monty python like my dad my dad used to play monty python and i just thought that shit was the funniest thing in the world but i've always like always just loved making people laugh is i mean as far back as i can remember just love getting a laugh out of people and i love making things awkward and just (laughs) <laughs> saying the worst thing at the worst time just to see what people will do so but the thing is is like i remember when i went, when i was going to art school um i remember this this kid I, I overheard this kid who was putting stuff into his locker um I, I, he was like saying how he was a, a, like a comic he's, he's doing comedy and i remember thinking wow how do you do that i remember i had like think already being almost intimidated like he's a comic but he, i mean his kid was like 19 20 you know what i mean but I remember just thinking, so, wow, that's a real comic right there. Just like I, <laughs> the idea of doing it just felt so foreign, like, like so something I like, I love the idea, but I didn't think I could ever do that. Um, but <clears throat> it, it's one of those things where I always, I always love comedy. I'm really into it. I always have weird ideas. And so I just started writing things down. Um, I start playing around with ideas and stuff. And then basically, long story short, a lot of people, that listen to this podcast have already heard this, but whatever, I'm going to say it one more time, but I had Steve Byrne on my podcast and he, I was, I was promoting his documentary that he put out. Um, and basically we got into this huge conversation about comedy and uh, how much I want to do it. And, you know, I've always wanted to do it. And he was just like, you just got to do it. <laughs> you know, you get, you just got to go out there and do it. You got to get up there. You got to just, you know, just go for it, man. He goes, you know what? i tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be at the Chicago improv. Um, and this is almost two years ago now. He goes, I'm going to be at the Chicago improv. Um, and I want you to do five minutes for me. And I was like, what? <laughs> so my first experience doing stand up comedy was opening for Steve Byrne at the Chicago improv. Wow. And it was so scary. I spent like five, almost six months working on five minutes of material, just writing it and writing it and writing it and just throwing it away and starting over again. And every time I'd walk my dog, I was doing my bits and I'm just trying to get it down. About two weeks before is the first time I ever went to open mics. Um, And that was terrifying because I knew in two weeks, I'm going to be on a huge stage opening for Steve Byrne. And I've never done this before. So my friend, I my, do my first open mics. And um, I did, I think, maybe three open mics before I opened for Steve. So it was it was a terrifying thing, but I did really well. And he invited me to come back and do the next couple nights, which I couldn't believe. And then after that, I was hooked. And I started going every single night, or not every night, every single week, I'd go like two or three times, hit mics. And um, I was starting to feel really good. I was, you know, it was... It's like an art form you have to work at, you know? Yeah. And I was, I was starting to figure out, you know, timing and crowd work stuff. And I've just, and so then the pandemic came mm-hmm. and, oh. <laughs> and so 
I was basically, I've only, I was, only, I've basically only done stand up for six months. Um, and my first time was for Steve Byrne. And now my first time basically coming back from the pandemic is going to be for Steve Byrne again. Um, but the thing is, um, I've developed, I've made a lot of friends that are comics now and um, like Kevin Nealon and, and, and mm -hmm. Steve and Jesse Kirsten. And I was going to say, I, I love Jesse Kirsten. Oh, I love her. Saw that. you, you talked Yeah. About and so I've had, I've had really great conversations with them. And Kevin just called me yesterday to congratulate me for the uh, Steve uh, show coming up. And he was so nice. He was like, uh, Hey, Hey buddy, you know, how, how's your material going? If you want to run it by me, you know, you know, if you need any help, you know, just, he was just like so encouraging. And he's just like, just don't, don't cram too much into five minutes. And I told him how much time I have. He goes, Oh, that's perfect. Just like, don't, <laughs> don't put too much in there, you know? He's like, just maybe, maybe two, three bits and just ride them out, ride them out. And I'm like, okay. So I just feel so lucky and encouraged, like, um, that I, you know, I, I'm not taking it for granted. And if someone opens a door, I'm walking through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, tonight's going to be my first time back. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty nervous to get up there, but I feel good about the material. So as long as I can just breathe a little before, <laughs> I wish I was close. So, I could come see it, dude. That would be <laughs> awesome, man. But yeah, it's it's. I think one of the reasons I like it is, and I think the reason I love talking about that and whatever else on, on this podcast is because it's an art form that challenges me, just like any other art form does. And like the fact that it makes me nervous, I don't like that. <laughs> like I, like I, you know, you know, I learned from Jesse Kirsten. She said, "Don't ever, ever let anyone know." that you're nervous always come across like you're that you like you've got um everything under control and that you're just you know like you want to have that kind of uh oh what's the right word uh i don't know but it's one of those things that's like all these different things that you have to get under they try to control mm -hmm. you know like the writing the timing the actual joke does it work is it funny like you don't know until you say it and maybe you didn't yeah. say it right you know so there's a lot of things to it that the confidence is what I was trying to say. You got to go out yeah. there with confidence and really believe what you're, what you're bullshitting about, you know? And then now you have to think about how everyone is offended by everything. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's something to take under <laughs> like, into consideration. Like my wife, like I, I run by some of my material, my wife, she's like, Oh, I don't think you should say that. I'm like, no, I'm definitely saying that. <laughs> that's like, you know, and I'm so excited. I have a, a Kobe, a little Kobe joke that I just came up with the other day. I'm like, oh, I, I, can't, I, hope I can't wait to say it. I hope it's nothing like Ari Shafir's Kobe joke. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. This, this one is, is I'm very actually proud of it uh, because it's a very layered joke. Yeah. And I just slip in a little, a little thing. If you're not paying attention, you might not even get it. But it's one of those things where I'm like, I was just naughty. <laughs> I was gonna say you look so mischievous when you were when you were thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's actually a, a, a it's a it's a I slip it into a joke about Jesus watching you masturbate, but it's it's, it's a little slip in there. Um, yeah. yeah. No, but I have so much fun with it, man. It's 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 art, you know. It's creating and pushing yourself. Well, it sounds um, like that's what you're you're following. What's most meaningful to you? I mean, you get on Instagram and you see other people do paintings, and you're like, it "Sounds like you're, you're you see that and you go, should I be doing paintings?" But you're pursuing this, and, <laughs> and that must be what you should be doing instead of you know yeah. what I mean. Like, it's, no, but it's I still do the paintings time. too. <laughs> sure, well, you gotta <laughs> the do thing. the work. You gotta work, yeah. but I mean, yeah, there's only there's only so much time in the day. But I this one, you know, if it wasn't for Steve Byrne, I don't know if I ever would have actually you know, <laughs> went for it. Like he kind of yeah. put me out there and I wasn't going to turn him down. Like, like I was like, yeah, I'll do that shit. And Steve Burns, a big comic. And it was just like, and, and to be honest, like I, I didn't really know what to expect when I went to the club. And when I got there, I was like, Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. like, this looks like I'm watching HBO or something. Like it's like a real place. <sighs> oh, it Man. was, it was, yeah, that's intense. But, but it's cool, man. And then after that, I just went to like, you know, I was doing open mics and like small bars and wherever else. So, you know, back put into reality, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, man. Anyways, enough interviewing me, man. Um, <laughs> well, I appreciate it. No, it's super interesting. <laughs> I, I, 
stand up is an art and I feel, and it, it actually makes total sense to me that you would be attracted to it. I've thought about it. I just, I just don't, I'll, I'll skip it <laughs> yeah. for me personally. Um, I, I think about it sometimes, but it's, uh, I appreciate, I'd rather be an appreciator sitting in the audience and being made to laugh. Well, do you feel like, but I could see how a creative person would become obsessed with, with stand up as, as an art form. And then that creative juice would start to get flowing and then you'd start playing on it yourself. And then it would become a thing that you'd be like, well, I have to do this now. And that makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, you know what it is, is for me, I, I'm, I'm a very, uh, I have a lot of thoughts and opinions about things where I'm, I'm always like, can you believe this? And I'm like, I like, I end up do, talking like that to my friends anyways, all the time. Mm -hmm. And I get my friends to laugh and like, you know, and now the only difference is now when I'm hanging out with my friends and I'm like, did you see this, this, what this guy, this dickhead did in Israel and this and all this stuff. And I start saying, and, and all of a sudden they're all dying laughing. I'm like, what the, now I'm just like, I'm going to write that down real write quick. That down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Save um, that. But it, it, but it's, you know, along this line of thinking, you know, do you find as, as an artist that you, um, do you, because I think, I think what's interesting is like with stand up and with sculpting and painting and, and all that kind of stuff, you, you have to have a certain amount of confidence, right? But you also, I think with no matter what kind of art form you're into, have those inner uh, versions of yourself that are just so annoying you know like like oh, this sucks this is terrible you should stop right now you should start over what, what are people thinking of you like they you know and that's that's a, that's a terrifying thing for me when i go when i do when i get up in front of when you go to open mics it's mostly a bunch of comics there and most of them i'm sure have been doing it longer than me because i've, I've just only started really and so you can't help these thoughts in your mind like they probably think i'm a hack they think i'm stupid um, am I just telling dad jokes? Like there's all these insecurities that you, and you have to ignore it and you have to mm -hmm. trust your art and your hard work. Mm -hmm. But I think we do that with our paintings and with our sculptures at the same time. And now we've got like the Instagram and everything else where mm -hmm. some, some reason we feel like we have to show everything to everybody all the time. Yeah. Cause we yeah. want that, that valid, you know, people to validate everything. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but you got to feel that a little bit, you know, with like you're working on stuff. I mean, do I have, do I, are you asking, do I have self doubts about my, my well, I mean, work? like while you're working or just, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that you can oh, for sure. to that, like, it's, it's, I don't know. It's one of those things. Like it, for me, it doesn't even matter. Like I I've done things that like people, people, because I've done certain things like, you know, big magazine covers and different things, people think somehow that I am, that I got it all figured out or, yeah. and I don't. <laughs> like, That's what I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm all, I, I mean, there's so many paintings, you know, like I'm working on a painting right now, um, where I'm just like, man, this thing is just a pain the whole time. Like, and then, you know, but I know if I keep pushing, it'll turn out, Yeah, you know, but it's just funny that I, people just think, oh, you just, man, Jason's got magic brush, you know, he's just like a wizard, you know, it's like, no, dude, it's like, everything i think is a struggle really i mean to an extent yeah yeah <laughs> yeah there's no i mean for me to answer your question yeah it's uh, i run into i run into times when i'm like um uh man I, I, 15 hours on this thing i don't look like i've made any progress whatsoever um but uh, i'm pretty good at regulating that now and stepping back and taking a break and changing my my focus and doing something else and, and just kind of hacking my own brain you know yeah, um, I don't compare myself to other people uh, anymore. If I ever did, I, I'm sure I did. But um, yeah, I was, like I said, some of the people like Adam Bean, for example, you go on Instagram, look at Adam Bean's work. I mean, the dude's a wizard. The, the little he makes these little tiny sculptures mm -hmm. of celebrities and they're <laughs> identical to the celebrity. And I'm like, Adam Bean, Adam Bean, B-E-A-N-E, -E, I want to say. I have to look him up. He's, he's astounding. Um, there's a lot of people like him, um, a handful, maybe, maybe not a lot, but, and I go, well, should I be doing that? Should I be doing perfect replications of the way people look and stuff? And, um, 
you know, and I've missed the mark on a lot of my sculptures. I can't stand some of my sculptures and, and people keep hmm. liking them, but there's, there's, <laughs> there's one little fatal flaw in 80% of my sculptures. I feel like there's one little flaw that I just can't ignore. And then, and then other ones I um, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with, but I think if you think you're great all the time, that's like a disorder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, that's, yeah. I mean, my, my, my thing in everything I do, I, I try really hard to, to compete with myself. I mean, that's mm -hmm. basically, that's right. you know, like the, you know, when I'm doing a commission, like I just did a magazine cover, I finished today and it's, um, it's not a big magazine. And in, in fact, it's for a grocery store line company that mm -hmm. and like, they have a magazine, like, you know, <laughs> and I don't, no one's going to see it, but like, I still try to do my best work on it. You know what I mean? And I want like, yeah, it's not time magazine, but I want it to be just as good. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's easy. It's easy to like, sometimes, to, you know, I mean, for me, for me, part of the, the thing that I try to do digitally, um, um, which I think is, I mean, it's not like, this isn't like genius or anything. I'm not like blowing smoke on my own ass, but one of the things I learned painting digitally was how to, to, to purposely not abuse the computer because, um, it can, it can be so easy to just do like a, like a real digital looking image, but I want there to be a struggle in a way. Like mm -hmm. I find, I find the struggle, you know, with certain aspects of creating art is why it's your own unique voice. You know what I mean? Yes. So I'll set, I'll set things digitally so that it's not the most, like, the you know, I have to work a little hard to get that brush to, to do what it's doing, but the result looks more personal. If yes that makes, yeah. that makes total sense yeah imposing limitations on yourself and and uh, and when things are too easy who says that working fast is good i mean sometimes yeah. it's i'll be i'll be i'll think i'm finished something and then i'll walk away from it and i'll come back and i'll go there's something i totally didn't see before and if i didn't take that time whatever my brain was doing wouldn't have gotten a chance to do that so mm -hmm. i think limitations we we evolved in struggle and mm -hmm. I feel like yeah, exactly. the more convenience we have, we're, we're, we're kind of hitting a trouble area. Um, yeah, no, totally. I find that you, 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 uh, like, I, I think a lot of people fall into that digitally. Like there's a lot of things. One of the things that drives me crazy, I've, I've seen, um, like there's a the videos that just pop up in my Instagram, um, by procreate. Um, which procreate is the company, like they, they have like a really nice drawing app for the iPad. Um, yeah, that's what I, that's, it's kind of like, funny Photoshop. Name, actually. yeah, <laughs> but, um, that's what I did. Like the, the Joey Diaz on it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like a, it's a fun way to paint digitally, but I started to know, notice that there's, there's like a lot of different settings that help, basically help make you draw. Like, I, I don't think it's perfect, but I watch these people videos where like, you can set certain things like when you're drawing, you can just go like this and it just draws a perfect circle. Ooh. Or like you do like a curve and it's just like a perfect thick and thin line. And but you didn't really do that. Yeah. You just did the motion and it did that. Mm -hmm. And I and you see these drawings where like it's like seems like half the drawing, it's doing it for you. And it's like mm -hmm. even like the, the way that they're coloring them. And I've seen a lot of artists like this, and it's just like, ugh man yeah <laughs> so yeah. annoying yeah it's gross i'm gonna have one on next like... week no just kidding <laughs> i said i'm gonna have one of them on next week no no i'm not actually it's but... great great ad for their yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i I've, in art on all forms of art the rough edges are what makes the art in my opinion I mean, yeah if, if it's too perfect that's why i love frank frazetta mm. uh you know over people who imitate frank frazetta because some people it'll be technically perfect but there'll be no drama yeah, and there'll be no and there'll be no story in the brush strokes where you see Frank was up until four in the morning. He had this commission. He waited four weeks to do it. And then he did it the night before it was due. Yeah. And then and then his <laughs> frustration like is in it. You yeah. know, he slept for two days afterward. If after he turned it in, he, he put it, you know, he painted it on a piece of like particle board because he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. And I like hearing music that is rough and, and the, the, you know, the guitar player hits the string weird and it vibrates in a weird way or their voice cracks in a certain way. And that's the humanity is in that. And that's, 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 
that's why I like sculpting traditionally yeah. and why I don't ever want to sculpt uh, on a computer and print, print things out. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's a thing too. That's becoming huge now. People, so everything's like, perfectly symmetrical. Yeah. Cause they only sculpt one side of the thing and it just renders the other side. And also yeah. it adads skin texture and clothing texture. And all. it's like, dude, it's yeah. That, you know, the only thing that I've ever been interested about with the, the digital sculpting is I kind of thought like it'd be cool um, to like be able to, um, and maybe I will one day do this, but I like the idea that if I'm going to do a painting of, or, or you know, of some, whatever, Ben Stiller or somebody, yeah, um, and I'm doing a caricature, but I want to kind of control, I want to come, because the kind of work that I do, it's really hard to do lighting because you have to rely on the lighting and photographs. Um, and then what, what do you do when there's like five, 10 people in one image? And like, like the cover I did for Steve Byrne, that movie poster, mm. like there's 17 people on there and he wanted basically me to, to use shots from the movie. So they're actually all scenes from the movie on the poster, mm. but they're all different lightings, completely mm -hmm. different lightings. And I have to try to make it work. And, and you can look at, you can tell like, Oh, they're all, there is a lot of different lighting in there. And it, frustrates me but i have to think well it's sort of like a collage thing so just get over it but like that kind of a thing is difficult when you're doing this like illustration work because you really do want to try to get the lighting to all feel the same but your references might not be that way but like with this digital thing i thought like well let's say if i'm doing ben stiller i could do like a rough sketch of ben stiller um and then go into the digital thing and just sculpt out just enough of the information where the nose and the features are what I need. And then I can turn it and light it whatever way I want. I can see how the light's going to re react. Like, I think that's a cool uh, yeah. thing. And then, and then from that, that's how I just leave it like that. And then I'll just do a painting and use it as my reference for lighting. So like, that's a cool thing, you know, that would, but then that would still feel like I'm actually being an artist, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I, I've seen whatever some, it takes. Yeah, uh, you know you're talking about like the imp imperfection things. I just um, and I want to I want to show you some fan art real quick. But um, sure, I was just watching Chris Cornell. Um, uh, actually, first I saw what's that guy's name from? Um, oh goddamn! Um, he's a uh, he was on he's in that freaking voice show. Um, voice show. That, that show the voice oh um, man i haven't watched tv and <laughs> wait, wait i can't think of the guy's name right now he's a he's a singer um who he's in like some like boy rock band or not boy band but it's like a rock band and i can't think of his name right now it's driving me crazy um but i saw him on howard stern recently covering a chris cornell song and it was amazing i was i, I, I couldn't believe how much he he, he like the band, the band was great. It was just three guys playing acoustic. Um, it's driving me nuts. That I can't think of what this band's called right now, but, but the singer did such a great job of like sounding just like Chris Cornell. Oh, that it was like, wow. Um, and something five in the band, F something five. Um, I, gosh, it's going to piss me off. <laughs> it's tormenting. you. Yeah. Anyways, I was like, wow, that was so amazing, man. It was yeah. like flawless. Yeah. So then I was like, I want to hear some Chris Cornell. So I looked up Chris Cornell on Howard Stern. It came up and it was just him with an acoustic and he sang Blackout Sun. Or was that, was that it? Black, Black Hole Sun. Black Hole Sun. Yeah. 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 And it was unreal. And it made the other thing sound ridiculous. And it was the real thing and it was raw. And there was a few times where his voice cracked and it yeah. wasn't perfect, but it was, it was, it was perfect. You know, and it was like, it was just hearing him by himself raw singing that it was like, Whoa, it's like looking at the David. It was like yeah. that. It was, you know, so that's like, that's the thing, man. Is like, I, th I think in all art forms, if, we're, if we can wrap up what we talked about here today, I think, we can we can say that I think with all art forms, to be true and honest, you know, is probably the biggest, um, the biggest, the most important thing I think, in in order to create authentic, you know, powerful 
work, you know? Like, I, I, that's the one thing I like about your sculptures is, and I didn't really get into this um, yet, but like, for example, your John Goodman, um, the thing that's cool about it is you, you have, you have slight caricature going on. Um, I don't know if you're doing that on purpose or if that's just, but there's, there is a slight caricature into the work, but it's just enough. And what it does is it adds more character to it. You know what I mean? And it's, it's not as stagnant. It's not like a boring, just portrait. It's like, no, there's feeling there's character, you know, character in it. So that means a lot to hear that. Yeah. That's, that's what I hope for with everything I do. Yeah. So is that, sorry, is that something that you actually, are you trying to kind of slightly exaggerate or is it just kind of, I think it's just how I sculpt. I I think it's just how I sculpt. Cause I, I stop when I like it and I go, okay, I like that. And I, but, um, I just don't see the point in, in, in a complete duplication of it. I mean, if I have a client, I don't have clients, but if you have a client and yeah. you are asked to sculpt something like the Shits Creek or whatever, you know, you're going to try to, you're going to try to, unless they want a caricature, you're going to try to render out exactly. And, but if I'm making it for myself, I'm making it until I like it and I don't have to please anyone but me. And they just come out that way. They mm. just kind of come out with that way. But I do, I study caricature art of the subject before I start, because I want to see what stands out about that person. And that probably gets subconsciously absorbed. Yeah. And, um, yeah. No, it's awesome, man. But I would, I would prefer them to look slightly off. I would prefer them to look slightly caricatured. Um, you know, you look at the old statues in, in ancient Rome and Greece and stuff. Those people didn't look like that. Their hair didn't look like that. <laughs> you know, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's about the, the work of art being an object. It's not about, look how great I am. I can duplicate what somebody looks like exactly, which is fine too. I'm not criticizing that. It's just not what I'm into. I mean, they, they, they were not that accurate. <laughs> it's funny when you look at those sculptures, um, man, you know, men back then had the smallest ball sacks, man. Uh, they, like, yeah. Little, little teeny, like, like some of those sculptures are just like a little teeny, like, yeah. What was like, going on there? That was a little rapes. <laughs> like what's happening, man. Gosh, There's I know no like, some people might have small dicks, but a nut sack that small. I don't think so. Well, they, they must've been compensating for something with the Roman empire, you know? Yeah. Something. Um, all right, man. So let me show you some fan art real quick. Yeah. Um, there's some folks here that did some drawings of you. I think you're going to like them. <laughs> <laughs> so this Dude. one is, this is, this is by Pablo uh, Salas, or Solis Salas. And I, I love his direct approach. I mean, it's real, just like, bam. But just how he even got the Tom Segura is hilarious. The Tom is great too. I saw me and I was like, that's great. And then the Tom is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and i love how that your nose is like jammed into your upper lip you're like hmm, it is it is hmm. <laughs> like i can i just imagine while you're sculpting your hmm. <laughs> it's so it. crazy that's awesome man he's that's a great he did a great job yeah and that caricature of tom there it's very simple but it's pretty spot on man it's pretty good. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I still laugh at the arm turned backwards. Poor Tom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it sucks so bad. Um, okay, who's the next? The, the... Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 Why does this stuff make us laugh so much? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh, man. Um, let's see. I have I have ten I have ten uh, <laughs> Adam's apples. I love it. Yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Oh, by the way, that's by Hosean Reservoir. Great job, fantastic. And uh, this is by Jacques Lamoni. That that is mind blowing, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Dude, fantastic work yeah and this this is actually perfect perfect for us uh you know for sculpting because he's you know that's one thing i like about his technique is he's very much thinking in a three-dimensional way with his cross hatching and his form yes so it works perfect that way and he's it's pretty awesome 
Um, and uh, it was funny because last, if, if you check out last podcast, he he did something that kind of blew my mind. Is th- there's two guys that basically submit work every single time, and it's him and it's Dominic Zeilinger. And there's a few other regulars, but he last time decided to mimic Dominic's style mm. and try to come up with how he thinks Dominic's going to do his, his submission. And it was so weird how close they were together. It was wow. That's yeah, cool. You got to check it out. It's pretty interesting. Jack is awesome. Jacques. Jacques. They say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this is by Ray Shipman. Um, wow. You almost look like Bruce Lee in this one. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That's a cool one. I like that. Yeah. And uh, okay. So this is, so now wow. this is, this is interesting because this is Dominic Zeilinger. This time he's trying to mimic Jacques Lemonier style. Okay. <laughs> so like they're, they're kind of playing off each other right now. It's kind of funny. I like how my my chin hairs look like a skyline of a or like a tree line. <laughs> yeah. Like a forest. That's really yeah. cool. That's really cool. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Interesting style, man. It, it turned out it worked out, Dominic. Um, here I'm gonna try to zoom this one in. This is by um, Paula I mean, Pet Petloani. I like this one. It's pretty cool. I love it. I love it. I love the hair too. Cause I was yeah. concerned about my hair that day. <laughs> <laughs> this, has, this has like a real nice, and this is like what we were talking about. Like the grit, mm-hmm. you know, like the, yes. there's like things that some people would be like, Oh, it's messy here. And it's like, no, it's, it's beautiful like that. That's my favorite. It. That's my yeah. favorite. I, they got my Scott, my Scott, my Spock eyebrow too. I have like half an <laughs> eyebrow. So I, I, I <laughs> That's funny. I got hit by a shopping cart when I was like six years old. Oh, and it geez. Took, took half my eyebrow off. Wow. So, yeah. I was running through the supermarket and I just turned and some old lady hit me with her shopping cart. Gosh. Are you, so are you afraid of shopping carts now to this day? No, no. Yeah. Although I haven't used one since then. That's interesting. I <laughs> yeah. never thought about it. I think we figured it out. <laughs> uh, this is by Matt Elder. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's captured my inner darkness. Yeah. <laughs> look you, you look like a therapist who's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I want to write that character now yeah. and play it. Um, this is, this is pretty, wow. this is by Dino Lee. This is interesting too. Cause it's, it's, it looks simple and quick, but pretty good likeness, man. Yeah. yeah, it's it, it's incredible the variety of ways you can depict a face. I mean, I'm not saying anything anyone hasn't said a hundred times before, but you can depict a face in so many different ways that look nothing like each other, but they all look like that person, and that never and that never ceases to fascinate me. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And oh, I this I love this one. This one wow. turned out really good. Wow, it's by Christine Varati. Yeah. She she's great, man. He's got the eyebrow thing too. Yeah. Um, but this is this is what I love about this. This is this is a perfect example of a digital painting that is. It doesn't matter that it's digital. It's a it's just a painting. Yeah. Like her thought process and the way she does it, she doesn't forget what it is. Like it exists as a painting. You know. It's really cool. It's got that roughness to it, but also it's got the detail where it, you know we could draw the eye and all that. Yeah. And she had a question, actually. I just remembered. Um, I told her to, to, you know, send me a voice message, but she, she didn't do it. Um, but it's okay. But she was She's wondering fired. why the, why the sculpt was green. She was wondering what what kind of material is that that makes it green. Is it's it- just it's just the color of the clay. It's NSP medium Chavant clay. Just it's got that color to it. I love the color. I wish I could yeah. preserve that color. For the yeah, it is pretty piece. interesting. When I get it, when I get, so the Bruce, I want to get actually, I'm working really hard to make this Bruce as close on point as possible because I want to get it cast in bronze and send mm. it to his, his daughter. Oh, cool. And if I, and when I get a cast in bronze, that's actually the color. I want to get a patina on it. Mm. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. I love that color. And uh, here's the final <laughs> one <laughs> by Juan Gastelum. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i think that's supposed to be me sculpting you but for some reason i have a fumang chu uh mustache yeah whatever. this is this is a deep piece yeah <laughs> it's something what if, there's a lot going on here 
<laughs> Whoops, a happy accident. Hmm. Interesting. That's <laughs> that's my origin story. I got clobbered on the head by a yeah. hammer. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there, but amazing. Anyways, thanks everybody. I really appreciate all that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> So, man, thanks so much for joining me for this. Uh, it's been fun just chatting with you, man, and just, you know, shooting the shit. Um, is there anything, uh, you know, you want to let people know, you know, where to follow you or different things coming up or anything like that? Let people know where they can uh, find you and all that. Yeah, dude, it was, it was, a, it was a pleasure talking to you, too, really. And I, uh, I'm honored. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of your work. And uh, this was fantastic. So. Well, but you, uh, as far as following me, uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's at Freak Shop Gallery. And uh, I have an Etsy store, freakshopgallery.etsy.com. Um, I don't have any galleries or anything coming up, uh, no, no public shows. But uh, when I do, I will be announcing it on there, on, on Instagram. And um, that's probably the best way to find me. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. And you can come. We'll- have you back on again we'll talk some more uh, that'd be great about some cool arch stuff yeah dude. so awesome thanks so much man and uh for everyone else thank you so much next week i'm having sebastian martin on who is an awesome caricature artist he does really amazing things with the art form new original things i think i think anyways uh so that's gonna be really cool so uh until next time see you next week you want answers truth.